Good afternoon and uh, welcome to this week's weekly webinar on Monday the 27th of February and to look ahead to the key events this week. Before I get started I have to do the obligatory disclaimer, risk warning, um, so that basically anything that I talk about discuss it's not meant to be trading advice it's just to give you a broad overview of some of the key events that I think will move markets not only today but uh, this week, this week as well, and certainly I think uh, the main event, I think, in the absence of non-farm payrolls and the US employment reports, because they've been put back a week due to the fact that February is a short month, 28th, 28th of February, obviously is the last day of the month tomorrow. That means that um, the Bureau for Labor Statistics um, decided to put back non-farm payrolls from the 3rd of March to the 10th in order to get a much more accurate gauge as to the health of the US labour market. Um, and I think I think that's particularly important given the fact that the week after the non-farm payrolls report comes out, the Fed is due to meet in March for its second FOM, second rate meeting of 2017. Now, I think that there's there's a lot of expectation about what the Fed might do at that March meeting. My personal view is that they should get on with it, cut out the prevarication and raise rates in March. Markets currently are probably allocating around about a 40% probability of that happening. You can see that in the data here. But I think a lot will depend on what happens in the next 24 to 48 hours as to whether or not the Fed moves in March or whether it doesn't. At the moment the market is pricing in a 40% probability the Fed will move 25 basis points in March and a 60% probability that they will keep rates unchanged. Certainly if we look at the bond markets we can see that yields have come off in the course of the past few days looking at US two-year yields. I think they're the, probably the best benchmark in the context of what the Fed may or may not do over the course of the next two to three weeks. They're at their lowest levels this year and the lowest levels since um, the Fed last raised rates in December. And we can see that here. This is when the Fed raised rates in December. Since then, yields have come off, not only on the two-year but also the ten-year as well. So I think the market is is pricing out the prospect that we will get a move in March and it's likely that we could will probably get a move in May or June. Now that could change. Those odds could change because there's a lot of moving parts of this particular story and we've talked about it in previous weeks. I think a lot will depend on the Trump trade, the reflation trade. At the moment US markets uh, look as if they are going to open pretty much flat from where they finished on Friday. I um, think there's a little bit of caution starting to creep in. S certainly if we go back to the 9th of February, you may I'll cast your mind back to the 9th of February simply because it's important in the context of what expectations are with respect to tomorrow's speech by President Trump to a joint sitting of the US Congress. Now that's taking place around about midnight Tuesday, Wednesday. So 7 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, it's around about midnight UK time. Um, so the Asia session is probably going to be fairly busy. And it's this speech by President Trump that markets have been hanging on to with respect to so-called phenomenal tax plans, which he teased the market with on the 9th of February when he was meeting airline chief executives. He's talked about something phenomenal, he's talked about something big league and there's certainly an awful lot of expectation as to what he could come out with. Now later today the US government is publishing a two-page summary of the proposals that Mr. Trump will be outlining later this week in his speech to the, to the, in his speech to the joint sittings of Congress. And some of the expectation has been about cutting funding to the Environment Protection Agency and boosting military spending. So certainly I think defence stocks could be ones to watch over the course of the next couple of days. Um, now obviously there is a big question as to with respect to 
whatever Mr. Trump's plans are, they will still have to basically go through both, um, both, both houses, but not only Congress but also the Senate. And there's a very good question that I've just been um, asked here with respect to the debt ceiling. How much of an issue will the debt ceiling be? And I think you have to look at that in the prism through the prism of what the what the politics are with respect to previous Republican attempts to stymie the raising of the debt ceiling. The previous on previous occasions when Republicans tried to block the raising of the debt ceiling, we had a Democratic we had a Democrat president. This is no longer the case. Obviously, President Trump um, is now president. Now he's not particularly popular with some on 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 the on the republican side so certainly don't think for one moment that any of his proposals will get an easy ride we could well get further um input in terms of what he plans to do with respect to dodd frank uh and the volcker rule and certainly i think there isn't wide scale um there isn't a wide scale ambition to repeal all of that i think a lot of that i think i think a lot of that was ver was very very necessary and I don't think we'll get a large scale rollback of that we may get a tweaking of it we also may get details about uh, streamlining of the tax code the US tax code uh, at the moment they've got seven seven different bands for the US tax code there's talk that he might look at streamlining that to three there's also talk about a border adjustment tax so basically any any imports will be subject to a 20% tax. Now, an awful lot of US retailers are pushing back against that because it will push back, it will push up their prices and actually hurt the very people it's designed to help. So there's a lot of moving parts in this particular Trump story. Ultimately, Mr. Mnookin, Steve Mnookin, the US Treasury Secretary, has already tried to dial down expectations about what to expect. Certainly, I think that has that has fed into the slight decline that we've seen in US yields because of the fact that if Mr. Trump's fiscal plans are less inflationary then ultimately the 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 urgency for the Fed to raise rates is not likely to to be as significant at the moment the market's pricing in the prospect of two rate rises this year we could well see three certainly the FOMC hawks there are some on the FOMC committee one of which is Robert Kaplan of the Dallas Fed, Dallas Fed, who's talking later today. He's talking about raising rates sooner rather than later. Janet Yellen's already got on the record as saying it would be unwise to wait too long. So at the moment, the markets don't quite believe that the Fed could move in March. Personally, I think they should just get it over with so we can focus on something else. Um, and then think about when the next one is going to come, whether it's going to be in June or September. Um, irrespective of what you think of the US economy it is doing okay we've got durable goods out later today and that is likely to post its fourth successive monthly rise this is core durable goods expecting a rise of 0.5 percent you can find out where all the information with respect to US data is on the market calendar here we go this is the number that I'm particularly interested in it's this one here this one here the total orders also includes Airport, aircraft orders and what have you and tends to be much more volatile than the the month on month order this one here which probably tends to give a better indication as to the health of the US consumer and you know as we can see from this here if we go and open this look at the event information for this alert what it tells us is well, not only what's expected but what also the previous months were the previous three or four months were and we can see that going all the way back to October US durable goods have been holding up fairly well actually this will potentially be the fifth successive monthly rise in durable goods which obviously suggests that the US consumer is now starting to feel a bit more flush despite rising inflation because wages are also starting to rise at around about 2.5 percent a year um, obviously other, other factors to be aware of this week US GDP expecting a expecting a revision to US GDP an upward revision from 1.9 to 2.1 the 3.2 one is the figure from uh, Q3 it's not the 1.9 uh, first iteration that we saw a couple of weeks ago so we're expecting a slight upward revision there from 1.9 to 2.1 what's I think is going to be of particular importance I think in the context 
of what we're expecting this week is the Fed's measure of US inflation and that is core PCE. Now that is due out later this week or in March in fact 1st of March we don't have that we don't have that on the calendar because it says February 2017 so if I move that to March we can then take that over here and we can see that this core PCE index here is the Fed's key measure of inflation. I'm expecting that to edge higher to around about 1.8%. What we've also got out later this week is the latest flash PMR, not PMR, flash CPI numbers from European Union and Germany. And there's been an awful lot of speculation about what the ECB is going to do with respect to a taper. Personally, I think that the pressure on Mr. Draghi to um, bring in a taper before the end of this year will continue to increase and that could limit the downside in euro dollar at the moment let's look at the key levels in euro dollar we can see on the daily chart here that the euro is going nowhere fast trading in a range has been trading in a range for quite some time we can see that it's can be enveloped between around about 104.50 and 108.50 a 400 point range yes it's trading lower so at the moment what we need to see is a move back through 106 to really target the 107 area but it is finding a certain degree of support around about 10 just below 105 and at 10450 so for me i think with euro dollar it's very much a, a play the range play in the context of the overall move i don't think we're going to see anything substantive or anything substantive with respect to euro dollar over the course of the next few sessions the dollar index now let's talk about that because the dollar index has been trending higher since we bottomed out around about the beginning of February but it's finding a little bit of a top all the way through here around about 10170 and if we can just drag that all the way back there like so we can see that there's a good area of resistance through that 10170 area and if we actually look at the dollar index on on a Bloomberg chart this is something that I talked about last week and I'm going to continue to draw your attention to the potential a potential head and shoulders formation forming here with a left shoulder here a head here and a slightly more irregular right shoulder here but what's important I think with respect to this particular right shoulder is that we don't take out the 10170 the 102 area which is on the left shoulder here all the way through there and also there is this very decent area of support around about 99.50 so again we're trading in a little bit of a rectangular consolidation here apart from obviously this little bit of price action at the top where we pushed up to just below the 104 area at the moment we're trading sideways and it's likely that we will continue to do so while we are below 102 if we dr if we go through 102 then I think there's a distinct possibility that we're probably going to go back to the peaks that we saw around about 104 on the flip side of that if we do go through that 102 expect euro dollar to drop back towards the lows that we saw um, earlier this year around about 103 40 103 50 now the pound the pound is down now the reason the pound is down well there's a number of reasons to it there's been some chatter about the prospect of another Scottish referendum um, doing the rounds in the headlines and you know unfortunately for me I'm I'm a little bit skeptical about this because this is nothing new the the Scottish National Party are going to be pushing for a referendum come what may for the next 50 years um, the whole reason that the SNP exists is for the purposes of gaining independence from the rest of the UK. So why this is a surprise to anybody is really a mystery to me. So we're getting a little bit of weakness in the pound against the dollar, but thus far, thus far, we haven't been able to take out this very key support area of the last 